Hey guys, welcome to a very, very special podcast here at the Chiropractor's Edge. Again, Dr. Jake Hansen here, and I am honored and stoked to have CEO of team here, Corey Penninger. Corey, welcome back, brother. Jake, good to see you, and thank you for having me back. I appreciate the time. Yeah, that's right, man. Hey, we're uh, we're all over the world. We've got we've got uh, we've got docs in Scotland tuning in, and we've got docs from Australia. We got docs all over the place, and and you're uh, you're filming from uh, your freedom of what you get to do is uh, your your freedom is you're 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 in Vegas. You just checked into Vegas, man. Yep, we're here for the uh, NHL game tonight. So go Knights. That's right, man. That's absolutely awesome. Hey, and as we get more and more people kind of chiming in, um, everyone, again, if you, if you have questions, so um, I've got about 70 questions that I compiled into five questions that you guys asked that I want to go over. But again, why are we doing this podcast? Because, Doc, there are countless things that require your actual face-to-face -face attention uh, in your practice, in your business, and there are countless things that should not be done in your practice. And the most danger is, well, hey, when I get to when I get to this stage of practice, I'll have a CA. When I get to this stage of practice, I'll do a virtual assistant. Uh, the only way that you can have success is when you start growing in exponentials. Linearly, you can only run as fast as you can go. When you start getting two people, and when you start getting two team members, when you start getting two offices, all magic happens in two. And that's what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about why is it that you need to have a virtual assistant in your life and in your business? So, uh, I mean, to hit it off, you know, again, guys, I, I own 16 businesses. My passion, my love, as I was just, as we were in the green room here talking is I love, I love adjusting. I love checking people's spines. That is my absolute passion. I love it. Um, it lights me up. Yeah, I mean, yesterday we saw, I probably, probably did about 70 adjustments uh, yesterday, and it was just on fire. That's what that that's what I love. But I just hired another uh, another a team member with Corey to do all my editing, my video editing. Just, I actually love doing multiple things. But I had to look at okay, is it something that I love to do? If it is, I do it. If not, I hire out. So uh, Corey, I mean, thanks for that connection, man. I mean, th this is going to be a huge blessing for me. I'm going to save hundreds of hours being able to have this guy do our stuff. So th thanks for that, man. You know, you're saying something really interesting right now. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Entrepreneurial Operating System or EOS. Yes, from uh, Traction, baby. Yes, good yeah, luck. So we, in, in some of the first businesses that I started, I'm a serial entrepreneur, just like you, for best and worst cases of that. And uh, we hired an implementer. Her name was Josie Sewell. And uh, she taught this quadrant of optimization that's taught within Traction. And that bottom quadrant is what she called 10 to $15 an hour work. Yes. You as the business owner, as the business operator, you need to be producing like you were yesterday. You need to be building business relationships that keep the lifeblood of your practice strong. But then there is a enormous amount of administrative work posting consistently on your social media, making sure the phone is consistently picked up. And what's interesting is if you build this quadrant and you say, okay, this is my 100 or $250 an hour work. This is my 100. This is my 50. And this is my 15. The things that need to move first are that area that can be brought a team member can be brought in to administer those duties. What's also interesting about this is most people enjoy their upper quadrants of work, but they know that the lower quadrants need to take place. And Bam. so this also frees you from the monotony of work. There is so many things such as checking your email and keeping the house in order that has to happen. But when you begin to free yourself from that and begin to focus on those top one or two priorities that move it the farthest, while having a team that truly takes care of those other categories, businesses move farther, they're more profitable. But I would even make a more important argument that you're less stressed and you enjoy your job more because you're doing what you love. And so many people, because of fear or not being ready or not thinking they're ready to make that exponential move, don't move that bottom right quadrant of $15 an hour work in their practice. 
Yes. Uh, that is absolute pure genius there because so many of us say, well, Hey, you know, this has to get done. And before you know it, you did get 55 things done that day, but your number one and two did not happen. And then you are stuck. You are literally running on a treadmill. And I, and I call that, whoa, I'm busy. Whoa, busy. That's what I call it. Cause you are busy, but it didn't, it didn't move you didn't move the needle. Right. And so it's very interesting the the a lot of our dear friends who are extremely wealthy, incredibly smarter than me, which isn't that hard, right? Uh, but the multi, you know, the, the centimillionaires, the billionaires is very interesting how they are not afraid of hard work. They are not afraid to learn things. And they do some, a lot of these guys like, I, I mow my own lawn because it brings me joy. Like that's where I can think or no, I will never touch my lawn because I want to be able to do these other things. I want to do all these all these other tasks that require my attention. So exactly what you just said is critical. And that's why, again, you guys, it's so important to, to look at your office. So before you hire a full-time CA or a full-time team member, you need to act. One of my coaching calls yesterday, um, phenomenal guy, phenomenal. Okay, I got to hire, uh, you know, by this day, I'm going to hire these three people. By this day, I said, okay, which three people you know, what, what, what are you going to do? And we always say we want to hire people, not positions, right? When it comes to face to face people in, um, in our practice, because man, does that make a difference when someone is in the, the right person is in the right seat, like traction teaches, right? But when it comes to these day to day physical tasks of answering your phone, um, being able to schedule, being able to, to, to do your billing, all those things. There's so many things that shouldn't be done in your practice so that face to face, you can have good things happening. So, out of 70 questions, I compiled into five. And so I like to just kind of spit fire them at you. And Hit then, um, and any stories you've had with this uh, was going to be huge because guys, um, Corey is a problem solver. He solves major, major problems that will make you a fortune. And we all know what is, I mean, what is the most precious, you know, a commodity that we have? It's time. You cannot get time back. And Corey allows you to have time to focus where you need and want to focus. So let's let let's start right out of the gate with number one. So again, these these are about seventy questions that were all very similar compiled into the into the next five here. So all right, Corey, the question is: What type of work or projects should not be done in house, in your opinion? Yeah. So this is actually a great question. I don't look at it as in house versus out of house. I look at it as at a team and there's things that are easier done out of house. Obviously things that you have to do in house are greet patients, shake their hands, fix their problems. That is synonymous across the board. Things that are easier to move to what we call back office functionality. Love that thought. Is um, because I never want, you know, there's terms used such as outsourcing or we've got remote team members to me. I don't care if someone works at our corporate office or if someone works in Argentina or Brazil, or if we had someone in Antarctica, they're all of our team and they all play an individual role and no one is differentiated by which country or what position they work in. Um, but what well, do we play? Let, let's hit that for a second. That's a huge mindset shift change right there. Right. And I could see that being something that could cripple someone not having that right mindset. Because it divides you, right? A lot of a lot of docs fear having someone outsourced that they don't. I don't know who the person is, but I, I love that because we have it in our practice. We have kind of our we have our front desk, you know, right in front of people team, and we have back office. We have people who it's like, hey, my skill set is stats. I don't necessarily thrive in front of people, right? But they're still part of our team, and that's who we call is exactly who our team is. I love that mindset. That that's a that that could be a very empowering. Uh, or very disabling mindset to have when it comes to your team. I love that thought. And why I say that is because I had outsourced previously in other businesses six years ago, and I had a crappy experience. Mm. He paid thousands of dollars and got nothing of the work product that I thought we could. Through these university, through the BYU Pathways program, we have discovered there is amazing, hardworking people all around the globe. Really what we do at team to hop into it is we serve as a bridge at the end of the day, connecting amazing, talented team members, whether it's a video editor, whether it's someone to do your digital marketing, whether it's someone to help with administrative billing tasks, 
with amazing practices who need rock stars. The biggest silent expense that cannot be seen on a PNL is the cost of attrition and the lack of engagement of team members. And the biggest thing that I've noticed from doing this isn't that it's less expensive. It is 50% less expensive. That's a matter of fact. The biggest thing is that we have found rock stars who are steady with us and have been with us and engaged for years. And that generator that's always on in the background and humming, we never realized was how detrimental it was before when we turned a portion of our staff quite consistently. Hmm. These people that we work to find in place are some of the hardest working individuals I've ever met in my life. We just hope to give them a better job and a better future and to help practices solve problems. You know, and, and that's, that's what I love. Again, like I, I love dabbling in, you know, like doing some of my social media and, and it really takes a professional to look at it and say, you're really confused here, <laughs> you know, like, because, <laughs> and again, I do it because it does bring me joy. It's fun. Right. I mean, just like, I am not a great golfer, but man, I, I sure love to, I sure love to golf just like any other sport, but, um, but that's huge. But someone who, when I actually see, because again, we, we, we just hired Igor from, uh, from Brazil and man, I am so I blown away by his work and to see how much more efficiently he does something right. And that's when you see a, that's when you see a master's, what you guys bring into this is you look at someone who's done something, uh, something so masterfully, you know, I, I remember watching um, this gentleman shoe a horse one day and it was, and he was like 80 years old. And, and it was so, I was like, oh, that seems pretty easy. He's like, well, I've done this over like a hundred thousand times. So it may, and then I tried it. I couldn't even get the dang thing. Right. Um, but, but that's where, again, finding the right person who truly is skilled from that pool. Um, and with us, I mean, I, I'm super stoked. I think we've absolutely struck gold, um, you know, personality wise, team wise. And so now telling my, myself, I don't have an outsource guy, you know, our team is, we don't have 10, 10 team, team members anymore. We now have 11, which I think is just, that's, that's super exciting, man. So awesome. So, so what would you recommend? So we have a lot of people who just don't know, right? We don't know what we don't know. Um, that's why hindsight's always 2020. What type of projects work? Um, do you see most of the most of the docs that are signing up um, and asking for virtual assistance? What are the what are the biggest problems they're asking you to solve? Number one that that would remove us from solving that problem is does it require in person patient interaction? If okay. so not for us. Common problems that we are solving. I wrote down a list today as I was preparing. Number yeah, please. One, scheduling. There is, and the reason we chose to step into the chiropractic space is we pulled data from chiropractic practices on what percentage of all calls were being missed. It's 28%. Hmm, 28% a lot of, money. of marketing dollars of returning patients. And a lot of those get returned. I don't want to say those are just going down the drain, but practices are not built to perfectly answer every single call. Having someone on that back end who can make sure no call goes missed, or if one does, that it's quickly returned, develops that goodwill with patients and also helps the practice operate more efficiently. Number one. Number two is insurance and billing functionality. A lot of that is hold times extensively, treatment plan follow-ups where, hey, the patient accepted, but we haven't got them back on the schedule. Or they came in for that first visit, but they haven't come in for their X number of treatments recommended after that. And then video editing and a couple other marketing roles. But I would say the vast majority of what we're doing now is in the spaces that practices naturally run a little inefficient, which is that scheduling and missed phone call. And then also the insurance and treatment follow-up sections. That's just a lot of man time and power. But when practices have an engine that hums consistently, not just a CA who calls when there happens to be an hour open, that's when it really is a self-sustaining engine where you can take off a week and you can come back and say, this thing runs well, and maybe it even runs better without me. And that's the <laughs> sign of a damn well-run business. 
Yes, yes. I love, you know, and that, that's a sign doc that you need to always look at is when you are not there, not only does your office sustain itself, does it grow and or scale? That's one of the that's one of the coolest things to see. Like next week, super blessed. Uh, we're going on a trip to Orlando for the full week, going to have a ball. And the team is already, we've already pre-framed everything that's going to happen. We already know that we're, I mean, we're not going to drop below. We, we have goals of, Hey, when we hit a minimum of these goals, we have extra rewards coming. Um, we have cool stuff happening, but again, it's, it all comes down to, do you have the right people in the right seats? Right. And, um, and that, that's, that's absolutely huge. So, okay. Awesome. Thank you. So, uh, and again, and th this is a specific question. I think we've answered unless you have any other thoughts. The second question was what type of virtual assistants are there? Um, because again, th there may be different things, but I, th I think we, we may have already answered that a little bit, but any, any, any others, uh, any following up thoughts on that one? Yeah. So virtual assistants, a very broad term, what we really are. And going back to our earlier conversation is we connect hardworking team members across the globe with practices in need. Is Perfect. there some positions that we can't find? Absolutely. We are, we're no genie over here. But if people are looking for a PPC specialist to drive their marketing forward, or someone who has previously done healthcare scheduling for five years, we can find that. Through the university program that we generally work through, we have a list of over 50,000 people. That's crazy. So, That's so amazing. It's not like we're confined to a certain town. You said it best, right person, right seat, right time. Let's find that right person wherever they are. And so would I ever recommend hiring a senior strategy role or someone who needed to be in practice? No, but those good scheduling, admin, insurance-based roles and some marketing and finance roles, again, on that lower tier are filled very well by these team members. Awesome. Uh, we've had a lot of docs ask, you know, as they get busier, they they don't want to control their own schedules. You know, I, I, we, we've had several docs say, you know, I've been coached by my coaches, I should have someone I should have someone that can come through and filter my email filter my, you know, filter my messages through all across platforms. Um, I, I handling my personal schedule, right? Um, that's been something that a lot of docs have said, hey, this is a massive thing that's taking so much of my time to the point where, and that, that's a blessing, right? Is when we're able to start working on our businesses, not just have to be in, again, if that's your passion and that's your vision is to be able to do other things, that's a step, that that's a stalling point for a lot of docs is they go back to, instead of growing how they grow their business, they start with a minimalistic uh, mentality, uh, a scarcity mentality, and they start doing those $10, $15 uh, tasks again, as opposed to doing other things. So uh, what, what are your thoughts on that for the docs in the group? Oh, no, I mean, that's how you move forward. And it comes back to that quadrant of optimization. What are the things that are taking that can be done for 10 or $15 an hour by someone else, so that I can put more time in that $250 an hour bucket. And what I mean by that bucket is that can be work, but that's time with your kids. That's time with your spouse. That's time in your community. It are the things that provide you the greatest reward. A lot of the times those can be dollar related, but that is not all life is about. How do you free up your time to do what you love most? And this is what it enables us to do. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, well, another big question. Oh, big one that I believe we've answered. But again, I know a lot of docs are still going to be asking this. Uh, we, we always say we want to focus on what we want, not what we don't want, right? Because you will find what you think about, you will find what you search for. Uh, a lot of people who've used uh, virtual assistants or outsourcing in the past, one of their concerns that they wrote is, will I have the same person working with me each time? Or is it a pool of different people or an agency? That was a very specific question that came, I, I, I have to look at my last note, probably 20 times from the group members. Um, that was their biggest concern. Am I working with the same person or is it a pool of different people? So we place direct individuals with the practices. The practices actually do the final interview and say, this is the team member that I want. We want to, to make it cheesy, find that Cinderella fit. And I don't care how many interviews it takes. We're here to find the right person. And so, and that person works consistently for you. So it's not, 
hey, every day, someone different scrolling through your email, it would never work. This is a team member that is a part of your practice. Perfect. They live and breathe it. If they're there eight hours a day, they are there eight working hours a day interacting with you and your team. And so what we specialize in is dedicated team members. Really good and, question. Though. And 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 that that's the perfect thing because, and again, guys, you one of the things that uh that will propel you or stop you is the are the people around you, right? Um, I just did, a, I, I, I flew out uh, about a month ago to one of the, one of, one of our, uh, our team members here, uh, one of the guys that I'm coaching. And I said, I want to just, I'm going to be a fly in the wall for the first shift. And then we'll talk the second shift. And the first shift, these two ladies were like old hens. They bickered in front of patients. They spoke bad in front of patients. They, I mean, there was so much hostility and it's because they had both been there for so long. And the doc should have gotten rid of one to do back office stuff, but they were both doing, they're both doing back office and in-house up front and they both wanted control. And, uh, and I said, Hey, we're going to re completely revamp this. And I said, so here's my suggestions. Like, he's like, I love them both for all these reasons. They solve these problems. They're great. I said, awesome. It's like, are you aware of, look at your reviews online, look at your reviews on docs. I like, look at all these things. He's like, I, I wasn't aware. So he made a huge shift where he has a pretty decent space and he be in, in his office, he put one of the ladies back there, gave her a title change because they both didn't have a title. They were both CAs. As far as he gave both of them title changes, um, he was able to separate that. And now to see how his office is now flowing, having the right people in the right seats um, and then getting him now connected with you to be able to find, to do all of his other things that both of them shouldn't be doing on an in office basis. And one of them is just not her skill set to do some of these outsource these back office tasks, right? And so um so it's critical. Doc, who's 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 in front of you? Yeah. I think you said something really interesting there. And it may be a side note, but that I've learned through my years of business, it is good to specialize. And so having five or 10 team members who all can play the same positions, the reason football teams win is you've got a quarterback and you've got a lineman and you've got a safety and you've got a wide receiver. Like they're all very different roles and they're passionate. The reason that this video editor role to go back to that is because this is someone who loves that space is on YouTube late at night, looking about it. Just like I love business. I love entrepreneurship with, if I'm home at 10 o'clock at night, I'm not watching a Netflix video. I'm watching a podcast on YouTube and it's because I love it. And so if you can find team members that love their lane, and then you have a lane that solves your patient's problems, you've got someone who loves that back office billing, that attention to detail. Because someone who is great at relationships, generally when you look at their disc score, is not great at the back office stuff. That's me. <laughs> I love getting out there and shaking hands with people and having engaging conversation. I'm the last person you want to do your accounting ever. Yes. And that's the same thing. And so what I loved about what you said is people get in their own spot. What we can help practices do is find the right person that specializes in that so that they can go to the next level. You want to hire people who know more about a certain sector than you do. You want to have a biller who can come in and say, mm, we're doing that wrong. We could be more efficient. Let's do it differently. That's when you really move on. You should be the dumbest person in your business. And that's not a bad thing. It means you are surrounded by intelligent people who know specific things. That, that, that is one of the biggest things that docs, if you could learn that with every single aspect of your life, um, that's huge. You know, we, I, I learned that lesson a number of years ago where we brought on an incredible CA. She was gentle. She loved hearing people, but she was one of the CFOs for Habitat for Humanity. Very smart lady. And we found out very quickly that numbers are her jam. She sees numbers um, just like I find subluxations of the spine. Like it's just, you know, uh, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And she told me, as we had some changes of growth, people were moving up and moving and she and moving laterally. And she said, will you please not move me from where I'm at? It doesn't mean that I'm complacent. I love where I'm at and I'm so good at it. Would you please not move me? Like, I will do whatever you ask me to do, but this is where I thrive. And I thought, oh my gosh, 
Have I done that before already? Have I moved the wrong people? So in creating this role, you guys, to have someone in your back office, you want someone again, who is who this is what they are the best at. This is what they thrive at. It is a position that they, that they again, uh, where most people think like, this is what I would do if I didn't have to be doing anything. If I didn't have to wake up tomorrow morning, this is what I would do. I would be looking at numbers. I would be looking at, you know, all these, all these other algorithms. So that's one of the biggest problems that, that you solve. So look at what your team is right now. Take a serious look. For those of you guys who haven't read Traction, Traction is a book that we read a number of years ago, and my leadership team just read it again. Uh, and it's one of many incredible books, but the the system that it teaches is getting the right people in the right seat. And this is exactly what team does and Corey does. So um, so thanks for that. All right, so ne next question. And, and, and uh, this is where a lot of people got really frustrated with their past, past businesses. No one could agree on cost. I was told one thing never charged the same. How much will it cost? Yeah, really good question. Um, we are flat monthly fees. So for a full-time virtual assistant, we are $1,600 a month. Now, to be very clear, a video editor, as an example, is more expensive if you did hire a 40-hour-a-week video editor. They are specialized in their field, just as if you hired a specialized digital marketer or specialized finance person. But for those scheduling and admin related payroll related tasks, you know, insurance and billing follow up were $1,600 a month for eight working hours a day. Or if you wanted part time, which is totally okay too, we're $800 a month. So different roles that are more specialized do have specialized pricing. I don't want to say we're $1,600 across the board, but I would say 75 to 80% of what mm -hmm. we bill is in that VA role. And so for 40 hours a week, for one month, we're $1,600 a month. For part-time, we're $800 a month. And we're no setup fees. And we're no long-term agreements. We just run on month-to-month -month service agreements. If we are not providing value, there should be no reason that we have to stick around. Why do I believe that as an entrepreneur is because it forces us to face the bear head on if we're not providing value. If we have to lock someone into an agreement, we are putting makeup on a blemish that we have and not solving our real problems by handcuffing people to our business. And so everything that I've ever started has worked on month to month, not because, oh, that's just great and dandy and easy to sell people on. It allows us to solve our problems head on. I love that. And we, and we talk about that docs, right? All the time, the golden handcuffs. You, you step into a system that's already existing and you make the system work, but you get golden handcuffed uh, to a poor system that gets outdated really, really quickly. Um, and so, so that's huge. And that answered the next question is what type of agreements are there? So we absolutely, we absolutely love that about you guys. Um, and, and most businesses are going to have, they have minimum of six month agreements to some are two year agreements because they say, well, it's going to take a while to get this figured out and to get our, you know, our engine running. I'm like, well, how long, if someone, if that's what they do, if someone is incredible, like I'm not going to give a, a brand new doctor a year to maybe try to get things figured out. We, we do have a trial period, but we know already if they're going to be the fit. And that's what doing, again, we, we did an interview just yesterday of, Hey, here's what I'm wanting. Here's what I'm needing. Um, I've already read what I'm seeing here, it sounds like you're the perfect fit, but let's ask some more questions here. Um, but I love that I didn't have to do all the research on that. You guys did all the research out of 50,000 people and said, okay, based on what you shared with us, we think that he is your absolute number one guy, but let's have you interview him with us just to be sure it's the right fit. Um, that was massive. I want to make sure that they line up when people do go down this road, that they line up with those technical skills. But then I also want the question is, would I enjoy going golfing or bowling or whatever it may be with this person? They're a team member. And so you need to say, do they culturally align with my practice? Are they bright and bubbly? If that's something we define, like what well, a core value for um, our business is fanatical attention. When we hire someone, we want them to obsess about the details. 
And we want Love people that. who are customer obsessed. And so when I do that interview, I'm not just saying, okay, yeah, your resume looks great. You've got 15 years of Excel experience. But if I don't sense that customer obsession of, I want to provide value, don't hire them. <laughs> no, bring your values into the business. And we will ask you on our kickoff call, okay, what are those technical requirements? What are those years of experience? But in my opinion, more importantly, what are those soft skills? Which are, what are those core cultural values that you believe succeed in your business? When we're doing those interviews behind the scenes, we're saying, does that line up? We bring the best people to you, but then you do the final interview. And I don't care, and I said this earlier, how many rounds it takes us to do that. Only at the point that you say this is the right person is when we should start. I love that. Well, you guys, this this is, uh, I hope this has been helpful. And again, not just about, I mean, we're, we're here obviously to, to help you find your next Rockstar team member uh, to be able to help you do the work. So, I mean, today we've learned, uh, and, and again, my, my mind shift had a very, very critical mindset that I'm going to be diving deep into is your team is your team. There are very, very specific responsibilities and each person, you want the right person, the right seat. Um, you need to take a serious look at your office, at your business now. Look at that grid. Look at those 10 to $15 tasks. Look at the $250, $500, an hour task and look and see where is your time best spent that will allow you to have what you want, an increase in finances and an increase in freedom. And that also allows you, like part of me, one of my, one of my things that, that, just, that I love is I love the fact that I can care for team members. I love the fact that I have that responsibility on my shoulders where these people depend on me, not only to get by, but to thrive and they want to stay with us. I, I love that. So um, we're going to put a link down below again, you guys here uh, for Corey and his team. But I hope that gives you an idea of what type of person should you be looking for when you're hiring a face-to-face -face task in your office? That's a it is literally a face to face. They they're they're, they're greeting patients. They're doing therapies. Um, they're doing exams. Whatever that is. And then the back office side of your team. I hope that that completely clarifies it. Um, I, I'm excited to be able to grow our business even more. Uh, this is a possibility that didn't exist not that long ago. And I, I appreciate that now. Uh, I'm going to be able to have even more freedom. And my team. I've told my team consistently, Corey. I want you guys to take vacations. I want you guys to do what you love. And this will allow my team to be able to have isolate their focus on exactly what they should focus on and not what they shouldn't so they can have more, uh, more time and more money. This has been awesome. I really appreciate the time and it was good to see everyone. Hey, have fun in Vegas, man. Have fun at the game. Look forward to see where we're at next. We'll talk soon, Corey. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.